Welcome to another episode of Golfing with Jen. So for today's video, we are out at a new course, Kota Permai Golfing Country Club. Kota Permai is known for its challenging greens, and it was also the host of the last Malaysian Open. So today I'm bringing you around this challenging golf course. Let's get started on hole one. For the first hole, it's a par 5. It's a decent length hole, but the further left you go, the shorter the hole is going to be. However, there is a chance that you're going to get blocked by those trees on the left side. So I would still favor the right side a little bit more, especially if you're not going to go for the greeny too, which like I'm doing here. I'm aiming for the bunker that's located out on the right side of this fairway because with this 7 wood, I'm not able to reach it. And it would give me an easy wedge into the green. There are quite a few bunkers out there to trap you for your second shot so you do want to make sure that you get a good distance for your layup. So you can see that I'm a safe distance short of that bunker of the right. That's a bunker that you definitely don't want to be in. It's one of those very awkwardly placed bunkers where you're just going to have a very difficult mid-distance wedge into the screen. So if you are going to go for the screen, I would say the first thing you want to make sure is that you're going to comfortably carry that even if you do not hit a perfect shot. If not, I would recommend just hitting short of it because like you can see, I have no more than 100 yards into the green from here. For this first green, everything slopes away from the front of the green, so with today's pin position being in front, it was quite difficult to stop it close to the pin because this makes it harder for you to spin the ball even with a wedge like I was hitting into the screen. With that being said though, I think it is still better even when the pin is in front to make sure that you carry it all the way to the front of the green because it is still much better to be having an uphill putt for birdie rather than trying to chip it from the front of the green, especially when everything is sloping away from you. For the next hole, it is a par 4 and the tee shot is a little bit intimidating especially if you're not able to carry the bunker right in the center of the fairway. Water surrounding the left side, there is a lot more space on the right side than it seems. If you're able to carry that bunker, I would recommend just aiming towards the left side of that bunker because this fairway will kick the ball from the right to the left. So aiming towards the left side of the bunker, your ball is probably going to kick left and leave you right in the center of this fairway. Can I take that and you tee off again? I believe your second one will be better than this one. <laughs> Hitting the approach shot into this green, you want to favor the left side of this green. The ball here will kick from the left to the right, and on the right side, the water has it does cut into the green a little bit more. So even though you're likely going to have a more difficult putt from the left side versus the right side because you're going to be putting downhill versus uphill, the priority here is definitely to get yourself on the green. Especially when the pin is on the front of the green, you don't want to be too cute because it might be a seemingly harmless hole. But if you get the wrong bounce off the green, there is a chance that it's going to go in the water hazard. So definitely favor the left side of the green here. I hit my approach shot on the green and was left with this downhill slider. A little bit from the right to the left and we're putting towards water so we know that it's going to be a little bit quicker. The greens weren't as quick as they normally are out here today. So you definitely still want to be able to hit the putt, especially on this putt because you for sure want to get this past the hole and not short. But it was a bit of an awkward putt because you knew that once it passed the hole, it was going to run quite a bit, but you can't leave it short of the hole. This was the putt that I had coming back and to be fair, it wasn't a very difficult putt. I did see the ball definitely break from the right to the left going past the hole. However, I thought that with a short enough putt and if I hit it firm enough, it would just be able to hold its line. But it was definitely much more of a slider than I expected it to be. Moving on to hole 12 which is a par 4. I think you can visibly see that the fairway here slopes from the left to the right. You don't want to get it past those trees on the right side because if you do, everything is going to kick into a cowgrass rough 
and you're not going to have the best lie. However, if you hit this fairway, this is going to be a pretty simple hole. So depending on your shot shape and how you're hitting that day, I would definitely recommend favoring the left side of this fairway. Like I said, if you hit this fairway, it's going to make it an easier hole. Even though if you hit it on the left side, it might be a little bit longer. The approach shot is pretty self-explanatory if you're on the fairway. So from the fairway here, you can see I've got a clear view of the green. It's a pretty self-explanatory green. Water has us down the entire right side of this hole, so the gravity is definitely pulling towards that direction. With that being said, you know that if you hit it towards the right side of the pin, you're going to have an uphill putt, and if you hit it towards the left side, you're most likely going to have a downhill putt. With my ball being below my feet today, I knew that was going to be a little bit of a push shot because it's going to lead the ball a little bit right. Therefore, instead of aiming left, I aimed at the pin knowing that it's probably going to be leaking a little bit towards the right side, but knowing that this is probably going to give myself an uphill birdie putt. So left myself in a good position but wasn't able to convert the birdie there. Moving on to the next hole which is a pretty difficult path 3. Again water is surrounding the entire right side so we know that the gravity is pulling it towards the right side of this hole meaning everything is most likely going to kick from the left to the right. For this green it is a pretty tricky green because there is a big slope right in the center of the green so anything that lands in the center of the green is most likely going to kick right. The pin position today is front left, so hitting it down the right side is not going to be ideal because you're most likely going to have between a 30 to 60 foot putt because the slope is going to kick the ball away from the pin. So you do want to almost favor the left side and being a little bit shorter because like you can see there is a bunker down the left side. So being within the area of being a little bit short and left of this pin is most likely going to leave you in the best position to be able to attack this pin even though you might not be on the green. So I actually pulled my shot a little bit but like I said everything slopes towards the right so my ball bounced from the left to the right and I'm just off the green. Walking up to this green though you can see that the pin position today is a very difficult one so no matter where you are on this green it was most likely going to be a very difficult putt. From my angle I could not get it past the pin because if I do there is a chance it's going to roll down that big slope that I was talking about and maybe even give myself up to another 30 footer for par. So being here, my only option is to try to get it as close to the hole as possible but favor almost being short of the hole. And I know most of the time people always say never up, never in. However, for this hole, like I said, there is really no point trying to be too aggressive because if I get it past the hole, it's not an exaggeration that I'm probably going to have a 30 footer coming back for par. This is why we need to learn to look at the conditions and adapt because depending on pin positions, depending on the hole, there are many holes where par is really all you're aiming for and really a birdie is just a bonus. So moving on to the next hole, we've got another par 4. This is quite an interesting par 4. For my distance that I hit with my driver, I essentially need to aim it towards the left side of that overhanging tree. Again, this fairway kicks from the left to the right towards the water hazard that's down on the right side. The reason why I pointed out my distance though is because I'm not able to carry that bunker on the left side. This makes it a little bit more complicated because for the distance that I'm landing it, I'm landing it right towards the edge of the bunker. Which means that if I were to pull my shot a little bit and leave myself in that bunker, that would be a less than ideal lie. So if you're not too confident with your drive, I would almost recommend just hitting something to be short of those bunkers or making sure you keep it right of it. Nice. From this view, you can see why I said that this was an interesting hole. You can see that if I got a little bit of a forward bounce, I would probably be 20 to 30 yards shorter into the screen. So from the position that I'm on right now, I have a little bit of a downhill lie. So I know that the ball is not going to come up too high and it's also most likely going to favor a draw. 
So again, similar to the other hole, I'm kind of aiming this more towards the pin. If anything, even though the green is sloping from the left to the right, I'm almost aiming a little bit right of the pin because like I said, this lie is going to favor a draw. This is not going to work for everyone. I know that I predominantly hit a draw, so I'm confident enough to be able to aim right of the pin. However, if you definitely get some fades or some pushes, you most probably don't want to do this because you definitely don't want to miss this towards the right side of the green. It's just going to kick right and bring the water heads into play. However, for me, as a draw player, that's something that I was comfortable doing. So again, just always make sure that you know your game well enough that you're able to adjust targets based on your life so that you give yourself the best opportunity for a look at birdie. I think you can see that I visibly knew once I hit it that it was going to miss because it broke right pretty quick and I wasn't expecting that. I was almost taking a straight putt there. But that's alright, we're moving on to the next hole which is again another difficult par 3. This is definitely more of a straightforward par 3, the most challenging part is obviously its length. Today the pin is also located all the way at the back of the green so we know that we have a lot of green to work with short of the pin however not much green to work with past the pin and that's why I decided to go with a 7 boot here today. It's a little bit into the wind so I also knew that there was a chance that I was going to be short but I know that it was more than enough club to carry that bunker in the front so I know that the two likely scenarios in this situation was either that I'm going to leave myself with an uphill chip or an uphill putt. So unfortunately the second scenario came true which is that I did not hit a green so I have an uphill chip. It's still a pretty long chip and I know that I can be quite aggressive with this because it is uphill and a little bit into the grain. You can also putt it from here and I know that a lot of people would prefer to putt it from here but I'm pretty confident with my chipping so again always just do what you're most confident with just because people say that the likelihood of you getting a putt up and down is higher and getting a chip up and down is higher. If you're more confident with a chip in that situation, then hit a chip because you're always going to produce the best result when you're most comfortable and confident in whatever shot it may be and whatever you've decided and committed to hitting. Moving on to hole 7 which is a par 5, I think most people look at this par 5 and get a little bit tempted to cut the corner. Depending on how long you hit it and depending on the ground conditions as well, if the ball is not running that day, it's still going to be a pretty long par 5. So it doesn't make sense to cut the corner as much as you might think you have to. Putting yourself on the fairway here is going to give yourself a pretty easy 3 shot hole. Then again, like I said, it depends on how far you hit the ball. If you're going to be able to go for the green in 2, then cutting the corner is going to make sense. However, if you're not going to, just get yourself in the fairway. Give yourself an easy position where you're going to be able to hit 2 easy shots into the screen. After the layup shot, left myself with 80 yards into this green. So this green is definitely very tricky if you've never played it before. For this front pin position, you do not want to get this past the pin because there is a huge slope down the center which is going to kick your ball away from the hole. Again, you still want to make sure that you carry this onto the green. So for instance, over here, I'm hitting a 60 degree wedge. So there's no way that if I carry this short, that it's going to bounce up onto the green. I'm not super familiar with this golf course so I was aiming at the pin for this shot however after playing it I know that if I were to be put in the same position I would definitely want to favor hitting the right side of this pin. From the right side I think the ball can spin up a little bit more whereas if you go towards the pin or anywhere left of where it is today you're most definitely going to kick it all the way down the slope. So on this golf course, although the slopes did not really help us for today's pin positions there are definitely many situations of which you can use those slopes to your benefit. Knowing where those slopes are, for instance, on this green, if you were to hit to a back pin or to a center pin, you know that you only need to hit it somewhere towards the front center of the green and let the slope naturally lead it towards the hole. So if it's your first time playing out here or if you're not familiar with the golf course, you're definitely not going to be able to use those slopes to your advantage. However, the more you play here, these are situations of which you can make your golf a little bit easier by letting the natural terrain help lead your ball closer to the hole rather than having to hit a perfect shot to give yourself a tap in birdie.
Next up, we have what I believe is the index one hole on this golf course. I think primarily because of the distance of the hole, it's a little bit on the longer side. For the tee shot, you basically want to hit it towards the right side of that bunker. Again, everything kicks from the left to the right of this fairway. I think you can definitely see a trend here. There's quite a lot of undulation around these fairways and they all lead towards the water hazards. So making sure you pay attention to that is going to help you not only be able to choose better targets but also to be able to know where the fairways are going to kick because sometimes those kicks can make a big difference. The local advice here was that if you hit it more towards the right side, you're not going to get much run out which is going to make this hole much longer. However, if you hit it towards the left side, you're going to have much shorter cup into the screen because the fairway is going to kick it all the way down to the slope and it's probably going to give you about 20 to 30 yards in distance. So I did not hit that tee shot exactly where I wanted to. I kind of pushed it so I left myself on the right side here. The pin was located kind of behind that tree so I know that if I was trying to hit a low shot and a fade shot, I was not going to be able to get it there anyway. So my main focus here was to make sure that my trajectory was good, that I would leave myself somewhere around the green so that I could rely on my chipping and putting to try and get myself a par in this hole. Finally, we've made it to the last hole of this vlog, which is hole number 9 on this golf course. A little bit of a tricky tee shot here. I am actually able to carry the bunkers down the left side. They are playing about 230 yards of carry. But the safer shot here is to be aiming for the large tree located on the right side of this fairway. Clearly did not hit it where I was intending to hit it there. I ended up leaving myself here in a pretty awkward position because I missed it right. This hole is playing very long and I know that I'm not going to be able to get it to the green unless I hit some kind of wood. But with the overhanging trees, I knew that it was not a smart play. So I decided to just go with my 5 iron again and hit a pretty similar shot to the previous hole. After that, I left myself in pretty much as good of a position as I could have left myself in from where I was. So I gave myself about a 45 yard chip here. Not the easiest position because the pin is on the left side. So I know that everything is going to kick from the right to the left of the screen. And there's a huge slope down the left side. So if anything, you want to aim more towards the right side of the screen. And again, let the slope kick the ball towards the hole. I hit a good chip and left myself in a good position to be able to save power on this hole. I think one of the things that people underestimate is that a good short game not only gives you the confidence to be able to get yourself up and down when you, for instance, miss a green, but even when you miss the fairway, it gives you a little, little bit more freedom to be able to not always have to hit the hero shots because you know that you can leave yourself somewhere as close to the green as possible and still give yourself a chance to make an up and down. Chances are if your short game is not reliable or something that you struggle with, from those trees for instance, you're going to try to get it as close to the green as possible or try to hit a shot that's going to get on the green because you know that if you're not on the green, chances are you're going to make a bogey. With a good short game, there is a chance that you're going to not hit a perfect shot and still make a bogey. However, because you have more confidence that you are most likely going to be able to get it up and down from somewhere around the green, you give yourself less pressure for the second shot as well because you know that you don't have to hit the heroic shot or you don't necessarily have to hit the green just to be able to save a par and that you can still save a par even if you're not on the green. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this 9-hole vlog at Kota Permai. I definitely will come back here for a revenge because I felt like my score did not portray my game very well. If you guys take anything from this video, I hope it is the importance of your short game because you can see that you're not always going to hit perfect shots. But a good short game is always going to be beneficial no matter how good of a player you are. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Golf with Chen. Nice